So this is called Ode to My Best Man. For as long as I can rem remember, John has played the most pivotal and influential role in my life. I've always felt like I had this magical, charmed life. I have three older brothers and, uh, and a father, and essentially it felt like I had four father figures. And I always felt my, like my life was guided and shepherded by these th by these figures and mom, of course. But of all the dad figures in my life, none was more attentive, diligent, and focused and steadfast than John. John taught me to dribble, dribble with my left hand. John taught me how to shoot a layup and go off the correct foot. John got me doing push-ups in the fifth grade because we had to get ready for football and studying SAT words in the eighth grade because those SATs were just around the corner in three years. He taught me addition and multiplication in the third grade, and, and when that happened, I went from the lowest math group in the class to the highest math group, and somehow that influenced my reading evaluation, and I was went from loser reading to uh, moderate reading. So uh, big influential moments of making learning fun and, and development just part of the fun of life. Um, when... Uh, on my ninth birthday, John bought me a gas-powered two-seat go-kart, painted it a perfect, incredible Hulk green, and a few weeks later, John and I were chased by a police helicopter around the block from Burbank School to our, our neighborhood, so all kinds of capers and adventures. As a kid, John built innumerable army men forts on the pool table and figured out a way to tape Lincoln Log shingles together to make this incredible secret collapsible ramp door for the forts. When I was nine and getting interested in Dungeons and Dragons, John drew the most fantastic and magical wondrous castle on a mountain I've ever seen. Um, and that was right around the beginning of our mutual love affair with Legos. I would say my my love affair, but I, I do think it was mutual. Um, and uh, and although it was hard to say sometimes, John was so in the moment and such a great brother and, and guide, you know, you couldn't really tell how much he loved Legos or not because he was, he, he certainly looked, he certainly faked it well if he wasn't right there in the moment. Um, I think for me, playing Legos with John partially led to a decision to uh, get an engineering major later on and that opened the door to every professional job I've ever had. In fairness to dad, his three dozen anecdotes every night at the dinner table about the fabulous and glamorous lives of engineers probably helped as well. Um, John's creative imaginations and buildings and craftings and drawings made my inner life of thinking and imagining infinitely richer. Around age six, he made me a hand-built um, wooden rabbit fur lined jet black hand painted GI Joe boat and as a bonus there was a trap uh, a pivoting trap door in the back for shark access um, for me it seems like creativity and ingenuity can definitely be taught and a lot of um, what I've done in life really uh, resulted from parenting parroting the the amazing things that John built or drew or created John's always been committed um, to, to me and to family, and you can see that his relationship with his cousins and and mom and dad and, and all of us. Um, as some examples, you know, while he was at Dartmouth, he spent his leave semester in Tokyo with us, and we played basketball and hung out. And I, I got put through a drywall by accident once, and the happy result there was my mom had a rare moment of losing her composure and sent us off to run around the blocks of Tokyo like wild hyenas, quote, to, to get our energy out. Anyway, um, after after college, John came back to Columbus and, and worked at a startup and was around for my junior and senior years of high school. And again, a very pivotal role. And at that time, we had this rambunctious um, kind of crazy yellow lab that was not quite fully acclimated. I thought I was a dog guy and knew how to do this. And John really taught me in conjunction with Steve kind of how to be a dog whisperer um, with, with a Buckeye there. So that was great. Um, John and mom took me to my first day of school and through my whole life I felt the invincible charm of having three big fabulous big brothers pave the way for me. Uh, the bond didn't end there when John graduated from being a uh, safety walker guide thing uh, and then into the seventh grade he actually drove me to school to elementary school on his moped um, on the way to junior high school. So he was you know he was 14 I was seven and we obviously we had no helmets because this was 1978 and one didn't bother but I started every day of school or many of them that year with adrenaline the wind in my
my face, my arms around my big brother, cruising with speed to school. And, um, you know, I think I just started every day about three steps ahead of everybody else in terms of um, how I felt about things. Um, John was instrumental in collaborating with mom on about seven years of how elaborate homemade Halloween costumes. Uh, back back on the moped, I remember uh, one time John and I, with, with typical Winslow overconfidence, uh, I was dressed up as Dracula. We were going to go to the local library and uh, win the contest and then go have uh, a McDonald's dinner with our, win you know, that was the prize first or second or both prizes and we went we went there we went ahead and uh did the contest and we were just shocked and outraged when two kids with a goofy green face paint won they had plastic capes and i had the 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 homemade hand-sewn cape that mom had made and we just we thought well you know those guys are probably having a tough a tough uh, october and and that's probably good for them to, to have a seize what small victory we can so we, we figured out some some work around there on dinner um on a similar entrepreneurial vein i remember uh being in jackson wyoming as a kid scouring the town for um tin cans and getting gather accumulating you know 100 or 200 tin cans worth of um five cent deposits and the super cool refreshing amazing taste of a green gatorade uh, split three three ways with me and John and Steve Jackson and John always had a way to kind of create a mission or a purpose or uh, has a way uh, uh, to really make things fun and, and kind of uh, it was just pretty neat um, in John I have had a consummate trusted advisor throughout my life he's always had my best interest at heart and he also has good judgment which is a good foil for the impulsive way I can be and, and uh, you know a good counterbalance to the sometimes the Charlie Papp influence. Um, I can recall five or six major life decisions that John had a major influence on. Um, playing rugby, going to Dartmouth, getting into consulting. You know, again, three pretty big ones there. And John was right there at the forefront. Uh, I didn't actually even want to go to Dartmouth as a kid. Um, I'd been at all these random reunions as a six-year-old and kind of seemed boring and drab and like nothing was going on there. And if it hadn't been for John going on my college tours, um, uh, you know, constantly telling me about Dartmouth and uh, kind of ha hating on the other schools and trying to recruit the other kids on the tour to um, to go to Dartmouth because it was a far superior place and, you know, playing this funny tennis ball game, throwing, hitting me in the back of the head and kind of distracting me from whatever tales or whatnot, Princeton or Harvard or somebody was telling, um, it, I wouldn't have gone to Dartmouth. And um, one of the one of the happiest and best decisions of my life. Um, and, and really, I, I made the decision not really with with much data, just knowing how John felt, felt about it. <laughs>